Welcome to the SQL Offline Getting Started videos. Part 3 is about admin features. In this video I will show you how to create a table and add columns. I will also show you some advanced options such as how to recreate a table, delete rows, and finally execute custom SQL. I begin by connecting to a Windows Azure SQL server. I've set up the server but I have yet to create a database so I'll do that now. To create a database, I uninitialize the connection and specify a new database name. Here I change master to new database. Now I'd like to keep the password, so I set persist security info as discussed in the previous video. This must be the last thing I do before closing the data link dialog box. And with this connection string set, I can now create the database. So that's how to create a database. I'll now move on to a more common task, creating a table. First, I initialize the connection to the new database, and then click Add Table to display the Add Table dialog box. Here I add a column. First is the ID column. I make it an integer and then set key column and auto increment flags. Doing this makes ID an identity column and the primary key. Next I add a name, which is text. Then I'll add a switch, which I set to bool. Now, so far I have specified SQL offline generic column types. To specify a Windows Azure SQL database column type, I select small date time from the provider list. For the timestamp, I also want to set a default value. All set to click Create. I can see in the output window the SQL that was used to create the table. Now I can open the new table to create an offline document. Now I'll insert a couple of rows here and set some values. And with two rows added, I'll write data. Now I leave the identity column blank. Those values are set by the data server during write. And so far I've added two rows to the new table. Next I'd like to show you how to make the name column a unique column. I do that in the data link dialog box. Now to create a column constraint for name, I enter table one underscore name underscore UK, select unique, and add name is the column. Then I create index and save the data link. At this moment the unique constraint exists only in the offline document. Now to test the constraint I'll add a new row and enter name B which violates the constraint. Now I write SQL to create SQL script and I can see the create unique index. I click uh, what should be run in the SQL tab and I get the expected duplicate value error. Now here I'll change the value from B to C. And since the constraint is already created, I'll comment out this line and run again this time with no errors. Now back in the offline document, values are not updated because I ran SQL script. So I will sync read to update the offline document and then um, auto size the columns to clean things up a bit okay that was adding a unique constraint now let's add a column so I click alter table to display the alter table dialog box now I'm going to get a little fancy here and create an ID grid which I'll assign a GUID column type. Now I'll also set a default of new ID to generate the ID automatically. Oh, and I'd also like to show you how to specify long types. If I set is long flag and clear the size, for SQL Server, this creates end text column type. 
Now I click alter and can review changes. Yes, I'm adding two columns. Click yes to add the columns to the table. Here I open the table to again create a new offline document. And I can see the new columns. Now to load text into a memo field from a file, I can use the memo edit dialog box. Now I'll load some sample text and close the dialog box. Now I'll enter D for the name and write. Now I can see that the ID GUID is assigned a value. Well, I'd like to assign a GUID for all of these null values as well. Now I could just generate them myself and paste them into the offline document, but I would prefer to have Windows Azure SQL database assign them with new ID. So I clear one cell and write SQL, and then I'll replace the blank string with new ID and remove the condition. When I run this SQL script, the entire ID column gets a new value. So here again, because I ran SQL script, I need to sync read to update the offline document. And here are the new IDs. Before finishing this video, I want to show you some advanced data link options. By default, SQL offline does not delete rows from the table even if I remove rows from the offline document. Now I can force this behavior by selecting Delete Unmatched Rows in the Advanced Data Link dialog box. To show how this works, I have removed row C, ID 4, from the offline document and write SQL. I can see the SQL script that would delete the row. Now I want to be careful with the delete option. But to really blow things up, let's select Create Table in the advanced data link dialog box. Writing will then drop and recreate the table. Okay, so the very last thing I want to do in this video is show you how to execute custom SQL. Now I'm not going to run this script, but I will use it to copy the primary key name because, well, I want to rename it. So I close all offline documents and click Execute SQL to display the SQL dialog box. Now I enter SP underscore rename, which renames objects in SQL Server. That's better. And click OK to execute. And now I'll open the table to, yet again, create a new offline document and look at the data link. I can see here the primary key has a new name. Alrighty then, that ends the getting started video. And frankly from Interscape, this is the last thing that we wanted to complete before releasing SQL offline. So cheers and thank you for watching.